Okay, so what we're about to tell you is not a joke. And it's super gross. Let's just get really, serious. Really, really gross. So there's this rock band, and bands can be weird. I mean, you know, they just are. And this one's giving out human remains with their new album. How about Again, that? we're not kidding. It's two grams of founding member Donald Joyce's cremated remains. <laughs> Wilderness. 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 Well, wilderness. It's information, informational transfer. As I'm talking now, my words are going out through the air. If I had a brain, I could, I could while away the hours, confer and with the flowers, consult the rain. Through wave frequencies going into your ear, through the eighth nerve, into the labyrinthine areas, the temporal lobe. Well, I just discovered the radio show when I thought that I had accidentally tuned into three radio stations at once, but it wasn't three radio stations at once. It was somebody on guitar playing along with about three records that were being stopped and started, and then all of a sudden there was a clicking sound, and I realized the guy playing guitar was actually playing guitar over the phone, and they hung up on him. And I, you know, so I just started listening every week. Stand by. Stand by. This peripheral unit tape one is in standby mode. 
Pending final final test status. Stand by. Oh, oh, Duh. You know what? We actually could put it over there if we wanted, because we have this. Okay, so how do we do this? Oh, it's some kind of props. What do you mean? <laughs> Well, there's, you could... Lacking you know. self-confidence a little bit? <laughs> yes. Need some props to prop you up? Yep. Did you actually vacuum this, or did we just, just pull the stuff that I... No, I just shook it out. Okay, well, at least it's been shaken out. Yeah, because it was... Uh, it was just horrible. Yeah, I do these collages, which are, which are made out of photographs. They're, they're photo collages of, of uh, crop circles in England. Are you aware of them? Oh, yeah. Much? Yeah, yeah, sure. Can, yeah. Have you done a I think it's over just, the edge about crop circles then? I haven't because it's so visual. I don't really know what oh, to do with it. But yeah. uh, but to me, uh, the fact that they're anonymous, absolutely anonymous, mm -hmm. unlike all other art, the fact that they're done over one night in total darkness, the whole thing is like superhuman. Over the Edge has been out a long, long time. Yeah for a radio show yeah. since 81. At the time, uh, I was playing, I was a disc jockey playing one record at a time and announcing the cuts and all that, just like radio is supposed to do. And um, a mutual friend of, of ours brought uh, Negative Land up to the show one night and uh, they started fooling around with records and mixing stuff and playing stuff simultaneously and all that kind of thing in the studio. And it just amazed me. I had never thought of that. This is KPFA and KPFB in Berkeley, KFCF in Fresno, listener-sponsored radio. Some of you paid for this. <laughs> You're paying now. This is uh, Negative Land here tonight. Uh, six or seven or eight of them, I forget. I lose count. We're all running around in a frantic wrestling match over the board uh, to mix the finest in contemporary sounds for you, the listening public. And uh, we'll be doing this until seven in the morning. We would like to invite uh, you out there, uh, you late night people, to uh, contribute to this mix in any way that you uh, see fit over the telephone. And now our national anthem. And now our national anthem. The Star Here is the song of a bird who sings Scott his own King. name. Oh, pardon, madame. Ah. If I quit Oliva, I almost fell out of my upper patch. The bombs bursting in air. The bombs bursting in air, and the rocket's red glare. The bombs bursting in air. Our national anthem. I don't know why we were like this, but just immediately we just started turning records on and off and backwards and playing tape loops. And, and, and there were three turntables, four reel-to-reels, two cassette decks. There was like three cart machines. We brought in auxiliary mixers, our synthesizers and rhythm machines. And, and then you could put two phone callers on in the air, which we were real excited about because they could just do whatever they wanted.
suddenly I began to think what you could do with a radio studio and, and being a studio with a whole lot of sound sources at your disposal, you could just load them up and mix them and send them back and forth and overlap and all that kind of stuff. So I soon started doing that and, uh, and then soon after that actually joined the group uh, to make records and stuff. I don't think Negative Land is very popular. I think we're slightly popular among aficionados and, and the, the abstract fringe of music. So that's saying that not many people find it interesting. You know, but that's always true when you're trying to stay out ahead of, of what has happened in the past. Thinking of buying a small, 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 small sporty car? Yeah, I sure am. Uh, yes. Think of Cadillac. I was thinking of a Cadillac. I was thinking of a Cadillac. I was thinking of a Cadillac. Well, I was thinking of a Cadillac. Cadillac. Got a wreck. Cadillac. 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 Just a minute. I've got to call them. What lousy directions? For good. <laughs> Nova One to the Wills residence. Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead. Uh, this is Nova One. Uh, and, um, I, there, these directions are just awful, just awful. You know where it says turn left on Alhambra? Well, there's no sign for Alhambra there. It says Pleasant Hill Road there, you idiots. That's what I tried to tell, uh, the weatherman, I, about it going both ways. Peter, your lights are on. All right, well, I'll be there in a, probably an hour. Zoom in on him. He'll zoom in on you, and you'll hit right in the middle. I gotta check your shoes. Okay. Hold on. Well, look at you. Yeah, well, well, your feet know. are getting all dirty. Okay, pull it up. Up, 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 up. Your feet are getting all up. dirty. Look, see all the little groovy. That one isn't too bad. The other one. What well, would you expect to be on there? Gum. Oh, this one's bad. It's in there. There's dirt. Could you get a screwdriver out of the drawer? That's not dirt. That is dog shit feces and stuff. Get me a screwdriver. Well, I mean, yeah. Wet, soapy yeah. shoes might be worse for the rug than, than dry the dirt. That's it would it. easily hurt. vacuum up. Well, you this see could that? create stains, actual stains okay, on the rug. Tip down and it won't fall over. Hard to remove, difficult to budge stains in your rug for, due to the moisture you're creating. The moisture you're creating. Yeah, but you got the top of my shoes wet too. That'll dry right off. Oh, sure. Easy for you to say. You aren't wearing them. Oh, it'll be okay. You did step in the gum, I can tell. Well, so? Well, it's not acceptable. What does that make me, a bad person? No. How did I know? I had no idea it was there. That's been on there a long time, too. Okay, let's see. Just think all these other people that are so much more talented, and they're not here, and yet, here I am. There's Mr. Wall. Hi, Mr. Wall. There's Mr. Picture. Hi, Mr. There's Mr. Doorknob. Hey, Mr. Doorknob. What do you think is on Mr. Doorknob? You guessed it, Mr. Dirt. Yuck. And how do we get rid of Mr. Dirt on Mr. Doorknob? You have to take something to get it off. No, you use Mr. Formula 409 to get Mr. Dirt off of Mr. Doorknob. Yeah, yeah. All right, put it by the other one there. Right by oh, you got another one? 
Yeah, this right there, that's perfect. Thank it's you. extra refill. I'm sure yeah. you can use it. Yeah, I will eventually. I know that you like another brand better now, but I couldn't bring myself to bring no, another brand. No, four nine are always good. Well, what do you think? Do you think I cook like a man or something? I think we're having pork and beans and a bottle of beer. I bet you don't have any dessert. I have dessert. Jello. Yeah, see? See see what do you think of me? You don't know anything about me. Lime jello. All these years you don't you don't you don't even know me. Lime jello. is Dale Embry welcoming you to Ask Pastor Dick. Pastor Dick is joining us in this fellowship time to answer any or all questions about God, religion, or the Bible. Now Pastor Dick comes to you. Welcome to the show. I'm Pastor Dick. I know. Everything's a performance. I'm not performing. This is what I would do anyway. I'm gonna clean my DIN plug and the whole cord. Well, in your case, what you would do anyway turns out to be a performance. Well, aren't you guys lucky? <laughs> I'd say so. It's just natural for me, then. <laughs> Wesley, are you there? Are you there? Oh, I want to so tell so them funny. about this tape. <laughs> Yes, I'm here. Yes. Certainly. Well, always here. Okay. Always right on, the old on that particular block. recording that oh. we were just playing, yes. I was using a talkback type system. Oh, yes. Yes. The yes, bit I about know. the hair all full of curlers, that was on a tape from the previous year. And then the laughter that we heard, that was live. And then. If you want to continue with that, they're going to comment on yes, that Yes, I will. You see, folks, uh, the weatherman has a kind of a wired-up house, you might say. And uh, let's see, this tape was made in the kitchen, so he has a speaker and a microphone. What in year the, was that one, Waxley? In the kitchen. I, 1981 really, I or 80? And, uh, well, anyway, so his mother's standing at the kitchen counter next to a speaker and a microphone at all times. David is up in his... Uh, in his room with a speaker and a microphone. He can hear them, they can hear him. They're, they're, they're standing around uh, mixing stuff and cooking stuff and talking, and he'll be playing tapes They're usually from, uh, cooking turkey. Usually cooking turkey, yeah. yes. And uh, so he'll play them a tape from a oh, year ago, or two years ago, or five years ago, of the same thing. Them standing around mixing things and cooking things and talking. And so uh, they'll be standing there mixing things and cooking things and talking, and be turkey. listening to a tape of themselves mixing things and cooking things and talking about a year ago. And every once in a while, David would pop in over the tape and ask them what they think. Uh, so that's how it is at the weatherman's house, and here's the tape to prove it. <laughs> I ought to be a comedian. <laughs> we all did the show together for, geez, a couple of years maybe, the radio show, which was sort of the golden age of Over the Edge in terms of live mixing and group interaction on the air and all that kind of stuff. And it slowly, gradually, they kind of drifted away from the radio show, which is, which is a big chore and a big obligation on a weekly basis to come up with being creative for three hours on a weekly basis. So they just sort of naturally drifted away and back to what they were doing, with, which is making records and stuff. And so uh, I, was, I was back to being uh, just me on, on the air, but doing the mix that they inspired, doing the kind of mixing, the kind of show that they inspired in me. And I've been doing it ever since. It's useless, Dad. Keep going. It's useless, useless. Don does Over the Edge every week. He's been doing it every week for 34 years. For me, you know, after you've figured out, after you've played a record backwards on the air for the 10,000th time, it kind of gets a little old. 
<laughs> but not for him. Don could do a series of paintings with the color blue, and he could do a hundred of them, exploring all the different, you know, subtle permutations of what you could do using the color blue. And he would find that endlessly interesting. And me, I would do one painting using blue. And I'd say, oh, well, that was it. We're done. Now let's do a red one. It's so interesting to me because these aren't things you're thinking through as a kid. It's just where you're, it's just what you're drawn to. But the basic impulse to do it is just something really intuitive. Eat it. Think it, sleep it, 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 eat it. Fuck you. My background's in painting. In Kindergarten, first grade, second grade, I could draw. I could just naturally draw. You know those kids in school, there's one or two who can just draw from the beginning? They're pretty good drawers. <laughs> uh, I was that. I could just, I was always good in art, fairly not good in other things at all, not really interested in anything else. So I went to art school. What else? And uh, was considering myself a painter getting out of school. Of course, that went nowhere, it never does. And, and uh, one day I was listening to Calyx, the radio station in, in Berkeley, and they were looking for DJs. They were shorthanded at the station. I had never been on the radio before. I knew nothing about it, but I, but I went on the air and started doing a show. Voice check. I'm Don Joyce and uh, decided to bring you another show on guns. As a matter of fact, I have one right here. This is a little uh, Ruger 22 caliber. Don't worry, I'm shooting uh, only into the padded wall of the studio here. That's why I'm using a 22 caliber. If you use a, a higher caliber, often they will penetrate walls. But, uh, let's see if I hit the clock. Missed. Well, uh, it wouldn't matter. There's no one else here in the next room anyway, but I just wanted to play it safe. Good evening, starlings. I'm Omer Edge. Tonight we present a special memorial edition of Receptacle Programming. Needless to say, all of us here on the Star have been thrown into profound shock by the recent demise of civilization on Earth. Perhaps it was the realization that Earth was just too big to unify, the people too bent on maintaining a multitude of cultural biases rooted deep in their history that drove our forebearers to come here to the Star to make our own way to begin a new history. Adrift in this fragile mass cube in space. I'm using on the radio show carts, cart technology, which is also analog, little plastic carts. They look like eight track uh, little little boxes, but they're, they're predate that, they're analog carts that were the, the mainstay of the radio business forever. This is ancient radio technology that's now virtually extinct. Uh, reel a tape, you know, you put, it in, you put it in the machine, has heads, it's a tape player. And you play them. And you can start them and stop them and pause them and fast forward them and so forth. And that's what I use on, the, on Over the Edge on this radio show. <clears throat> and uh, so there's a whole supply of carts here. And I record them here and bring them up to the show every week. And this is our basic studio where we, where, where I mix, I, 
prepare the show every week, but also where we make records and whatever. Um, it's a mess, but it works. When I started out uh, in the 80s, uh, 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 doing the radio show and, and, and requiring all this material every week, I had to do it completely with what I had in my house, in my bedroom, you know. What I had collected over the years it had to be in my possession to do it. It just was simply no other choice. And it's what I record off the media, the raw stuff I get off the media. It's done off a cassette deck, which is plugged into the TV or the radio. I'm, so, so then I end up with cassettes all filled up with all kinds of raw material that's unedited. And then I will dub, dub from that raw cassette. I have a dubbing deck to it, to another cassette where I can stop and start and sort of edit the thing cassette-wise into the, just the parts I want. So, but I keep my, my recorder on you know, ready to record and plugged into these medias and uh, anytime anything's going, I'll start it, you know, and, and record it randomly. But I like to find interesting dialogue that's provocative or that's introspective or that's elucidating something or other that isn't exactly common. I don't know, it's, 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 it, it's like trying to relate to your culture in some way that surprises even you doing it, you know. Once again, we hear that voice from the wings, and this time it has a sharply accusing tone. You, it says, are denying the value of motivational research. Here's the thing. Changing Coke. Coke. What about Pepsi? What about Pepsi? I meant a Pepsi. Changing Coke is like God making the grass purple, or putting toes on our ears, or teeth on our knees. How about you do this? Say what you mean. Come out with the new Coke. You got the new coat. Kill the old coat. You have fouled up by changing the only perfect thing in the world. It's really sweet. You always hold it over, right? Really sweet. Okay? 85% don't like it. And what I did without looking at the label, what was on it, I opened What about the new one? Poured it over ice and drank it. What about Pepsi? Then I read the label, and then I knew why there was a difference. 85% starts screaming. And it's just like Pepsi, because then later on I tried the Pepsi. 85% starts screaming. And, uh, mm -hmm. it was the same. The, uh, mm -hmm. new sweet and the new one, it was the same. And the lack of combination. Mm -hmm. The two no boats. Tasted like watered down Pepsi, which isn't a good thing. All right. All right. I just don't like it. All right. They've lied. And I poured. Guess what? And I poured. Some critics will say. And I poured. Coca-Cola has made a marketing mistake. Right. Guess what? Coca-Cola's stock jumped over two points on Wall Street during the day. Hey, hey, Genius marketing. Hey. Uh, what's happening? Hey. Uh, what's happening? Hey. Uh, what's happening here is that there's a taste segmentation of the sugar cola market. A taste segmentation, pardon me, but I speak English. Coca-Cola tonight got four minutes on every day. But some cynics no money. say, and cost them any money. Yeah. Big feature story. Say, interview with the president. Say, that we planned the whole thing. Genius market. The truth is. That is brilliant. The truth is. The truth is. Never thought it's too right. The truth is. We have to do that thing. We're not that dumb, and we're not that smart. And you know that the amount of money that Americans spend on Coca-Cola in one week will feed all of the poor children in all of the public schools in all 50 states for two years. What about Pepsi? What about Pepsi? What about Pepsi? Pop art was a big influence of mine, too. That whole aesthetic of taking the common, the, the, the commercial, the, the stuff that wasn't even considered art and making it art. That whole approach to art interested me too, which is use the unexpectedly common and um, uh, commercial or whatever pop was doing. It was it was making culture, pushing culture uh, that was usually disrespected up on a pedestal and saying, "Hey, look at this again. What's this about? What's this? It's about us, you know, somehow." But I wasn't into collage that much in a, in a visual sense until I got into sound. There's something about what you can do with sound that's very, very difficult to do with imagery, and, and that is to create a, what I would call truly an emotional experience. Sound just comes in, it's, just, it's all inside of your head, it's, it's all in your head. And, 
and there, I think the the activity, the action is is uh, very very interesting to me. How that how you can create these emotional experiences uh, with sound. The idea is basically this. Think to yourself what it would be like if your life, just as it is now, was to be infinitely repeated over and over and over again. Infinitely repeated over and over and over again. Just as it is now was to be infinitely repeated over and over and over again. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. Over and over and over again. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. Just as it is now as to be infinitely repeated. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. Over and over and over again. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. If your life just as it is now was to be infinitely repeated. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. Over and over and over again. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. Over and over and over again. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. The idea is basically this. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. Think to yourself what it would be like if your life just as it is now was to be infinitely repeated. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. Over and over and over again. Hello? Hello? Don't say hello. Okay. Time is an interesting phenomenon. Suppose we are in the year 1950. Then the time traveler put forth his finger towards the lever. Coexistent in time may be worlds we have never seen. The worlds of the past and of the future. <laughs> Sitting anywhere here is a question of clearing the space. I'm not too organized. But I'm working on it. The way Don can illuminate a topic politically, artistically, spiritually, I, I mean, in so many dimensions, I can't even name them. I, I just, um, um, uh, time, time after time is one of them. Uh, you'll think I'm compulsive. I've listened to that 50 times, at least 50 times. 25 of them within, you know, a month of when it was broadcast. It's it's all about time. It's old radio plays from the 50s uh, about, you know, time travel and time anomalies, BBC uh, science things, uh, interviews, lectures, every imaginable perspective on time. This this kind of gently evolving, multi, there's always three things going at once, as in Over the Edges. So you have to listen to it four or five times yeah. to guess, you know, follow each one of the elements. So this is leading you through to a conclusion that is delivered, and I don't know if it'll make any sense to you, but it's, I, I studied physics in school. I've always, that's my interest, but I dropped out of physics because I came to the realization the only jobs for physicists are to build bombs. And I figured, you know what, we actually got enough bombs. So electronics has always been my hobby and my passion, so it's okay, I feel I can earn a living doing that. Yeah. Uh, so there's a bombshell at the end of this over the edge, and it is that non-locality is spooky action at zero distance. Okay. That, 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 parsed to nothing, then you need to listen to time after time. I'll give you a copy if you want. And where did the dream come from? Um, uh, if, I, if I ride on a photon, since photons travel at the speed of light, by definition, then there is no distance. That's that right. is, every place in the universe is right here. Yeah. It takes me no time at all at the speed of light to get anywhere. 
because all distances go to zero. Um, so presumably, not only do all distances go to zero, but it also takes me zero time then to get there. It, <sighs> yeah. That experiment, from our point of view, is a proof in principle that at least small amounts of exotic matter, effectively negative energy, do exist in the real world. If enough negative energy could be collected, time tourists of the future might be able to hold a wormhole open long enough to make a safe journey into the past. If enough negative energy could be collected, time tourists collected. Time tourists, time tourists. Well, I was 15, and uh, I pretty much already knew I liked weird electronic music. Um, but I certainly didn't know anyone making it. Uh, and I was kind of on my own out in Walnut Creek in Contra Costa County. And one night when I was 15, I was just channel surfing, and I came into one of the spots on the dial where you could pick up two stations at once, both equally loudly. And uh, so I stopped there and just listened for a couple of seconds to entertain myself until I suddenly realized that it wasn't two stations, it was actually only one station. And um, I think they had a microphone on in the studio so you could actually hear the clicking of the relays as they uh, turned the mutes on and off and pressed play on the the reel-to-reel the -reel tape recorder. So you could really hear the sound of the studio as they were changing things on, turning things on and off, uh, stopping and starting three records in concert so the conversations in them seemed to be going on with each other instead of the people that were actually talking to each other on the record. Uh, and within about 30 seconds, it was, it was a real life-changing paradigm shift where I realized that live electronic music did exist. Uh, you just made it using pre-recordings, but instead of just listening to the pre-recording all the way through like a passive audience member you could manipulate the recordings you could stop and start them you could collage them you could play them at once and all of a sudden it became live music recordings became live music that was the time you've got 48 hours to save a lot of money and now through the magic of time lapse radio now is the time You've got 48 hours to save a lot of money. Time. What a... Now's the time. So that really lit the light bulb over my head. And uh, so I dragged out cassettes and I uh, recorded the rest of that episode from 12.30 in the morning to 3 in the morning. And... Um, Slowly I realized that half of the voices in the mix were actually coming from the phone callers. Total access, very egalitarian. Anybody could get on and basically have themselves heard and it was all happening at once. Yeah, it was amazing. It was an amazing, uh, it was pretty easily life-changing. Um, and uh, that's how I found out about the band. The band wasn't actually even on every, any, every week, although that week Negative Land was on and they were announcing themselves uh, frequently. But uh, I think six months later, I came across a copy of a Big Ten Eight Place in the electronic music section. And I was like, well, wow, okay, I get it. They're a local band. And uh, so I took that home and... Um, kept listening to the show, went to some of the concerts, introduced myself, started playing on the show.
a good number are, are appreciating it and following it and getting something out of it. And that's gratifying to know. Um, but making records uh, is a drag to me, actually. It takes so long. It takes so long to come out that you just seem to be waiting around forever. And, and, and you make something and it takes forever and it's so involved and it's so slow. And so the satisfaction of, of, of people reacting to it or putting it out and there it is and pushing it in front of the public and doing all that, that kind of satisfaction is like just there once every few years when you release something, which is what Negative William does. We release something about every four, six or eight years, we'll release something new. The radio show, on the other hand, is very direct and it, uh, it's, it's automatic, it's just there uh, live. And so you're in front of a live audience every week with a whole lot of material, doing whatever you want. And, and there's a sense of having an impact, being a radio show that's, that's, that's just available to the whole Bay Area and online to the whole world. And, and, and that, that is much more gratifying to me. Negative land will certainly try our best. If the statement is true, then the statement is true. And if the statement is false, then the statement is false. Don is probably one of the shyest people I know. And I know when we've gone out performing and touring that he just said he hates it. He hates having to meet people and deal with everything to do with traveling, seeing new places. None of it interests him. Whenever we've gone to other countries, he just wants to come right back home. What interests him is the work, doing the work. That's the only thing that interests him. And all that other stuff, you know, it, it just doesn't work for him. And I think as he's gotten older and he's lived the way he lives, you know, in, inside his little room, I think that that's gotten more and more and more extreme. And his contact with the world is through through uh, Negative Land's work and through his weekly radio show. If the statement is true, then the statement is false. And if the statement is false, then the statement is true. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. Negative Land had a big show scheduled for uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Barcelona that I had worked on with the curator for many, many months, I think the better part of a year. And we had just gone back and forth about details and money, and it wasn't going to be a lot of money, but we decided to do it anyway, and it was all set. And six weeks before, I want to say, Don just announced to Mark and myself that he just was not going to go. He said, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to do any more live shows. It's too stressful. It's stressing me out. I can't do it. I'm too old. And we were just sort of like, he's like, I got my radio show. And I'm, I'm committed to my radio show 100%. That's what I do. And I just want to work on that. I'm going to work on that. And that's all I care about. And if there's records or things too, that's fine. But I'm just going to work on the radio show. Then the statement is true, true, true. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. He never liked to leave the house. He would leave the house to go shopping. So, but he would do all these things and he would never complain because he would always say, the reason why I'm doing this is for the art. I'm always, I mean, you, I don't care about sightseeing. I don't care about being in blah, blah, blah. You know, I just, let's do the show. I'll do a show every night, you know. It was too much for his brain to handle the idea of having to go across the world. It was too much. And that was, to my mind, I have, I have always demarcated that as the beginning of Don's brain in decline. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. And we get into a loop which goes on forever. Welcome to Over the Edge. And a very good wait. Hello? Test. One, two, test. Oh, shucks. <sighs> Let's try that again. Oh, my gosh. This is awful. This is horrible.
Oh, I get it. I'm so stupid. There I am in my stupid echo. Okay, as you can tell, this is live radio. Let me begin again. You know, we had already been seeing the really dark stuff start happening, the really big memory lapses, and not just memory lapses, but seizures and, yeah. you know, really awful stuff, and that he was very much in denial that they were happening. I remember having these long conversations with him where I would have to repeat back to him what had happened and say, like, Don, these things did happen. And he would say, well, why don't you videotape them the next time? Like, get out a camera and tape it, because I don't believe you. Until we badgered him and really badgered him, he, he wouldn't go to a doctor. But the doctors never did discover what was wrong with his brain. You but know? he remembered how to do the show. He threw everything he had into that show, yes. He summoned up everything possible to do that show. That's right. He really would have died instantly if, uh, if he couldn't have done the show anymore. So. It's a sense of being one with the universe. Everything is composed of a certain balance of the four elements. The element of air is the part of ourselves that is least tangible. And that, of course, is our minds. The element of fire implies passion, power. The element of water, when we experience intense emotions like anger or joy, we shed water. It is also associated with the deeper aspects of our minds, with dreams. And finally, the element of earth is associated with solidity, with grounding. It's the human imagination in its all in your head. <laughs> so I think most groups have been, if, well, how many groups are still together after 35 years? Oh, and, no. and those no. few that are, <laughs> if you could call that together. how many of them are doing anything actually interesting in their new work? I really, it's, it's almost unheard of. And one of the reasons we hadn't put out a new record for so many years is that we ourselves were conscious of that. And we want to make sure if we're going to put out something new, it better be damn good and take our, what we're doing to a new place we haven't gone and it took that many years for something to emerge uh, that, that sort of met, you know, met that standard. Otherwise, I think our view is we're not going to bother to put anything out if it's just us retreading, you know, the same territory. Well, that's a good spin, but who do you think is going to believe that? <laughs> <laughs> this, this was no. done years ago. No, no, no. The, project, the project being, it doesn't, that doesn't matter. It is frustrating that things take so long to get done. Yes, it is absolutely but insane, the ridiculous. the nature of the, of the group that makes every decision so take so long. That's I think. right. That's, That's true. That is true. Too much better. democracy around yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, but, I mean, that it says no. something about the, the process, which is great, but that something's If we but. put this thing out when it was it was kind of in an almost done form two years ago it wouldn't be in a bible That's it took right. that long for that idea to finally pop out of somebody's brain in this case peter's you know that that was a, a but, way to do it and it took thing, it to a new it took it I to a new it level took two years for peter to come up with that idea that's right, right. You, we could be waiting another five years yeah. and suddenly we would have another idea that was also it's good it's also good exactly it's, it's, it's a good spin it to this other level. it's a good spin but no, it's, it's not it's not it's not the be all end all that's I only think, one I way think, of doing things i think yes we are lazy but it benefits us that's even more interesting. So I think you, 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 you found, you found back a good way to deal with the laziness. We could, yeah, okay. we could you get, get benefit out of it. We yes. could be faster, but but uh, superseding ideas do come up because we're lazy, and then the thing ends up being better. But we could work faster. For Christ's sake, I do three hours of new show every fucking week. Yep. Ideas, ideas, yep. ideas. Yep. ideas. Yep. You're the most for prolific the, member of this group, and have been for a long yep. time. You have an idea and you start working on it, and suddenly the whole idea changes. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Or you're just working on stuff 
it, it's sort of zombie-like, and, and suddenly things pop out at you as ideas. Wait, I'm sorry. Am I doing? Did I just do the messed up one and hand it out there? I'm confused. Yeah, you did, but I have it. You can't just sit around waiting for a perfect idea. I think it would. I think he'd have more ideas if he made more music, for instance. In the end, I my feeling is, and I know Don agrees, you have to live with these things for the rest of your life, you know, that you've made this weird art object. So I don't want to put out something that feels like it was 80% or even 90%. I want to feel like it was 90 You're in a room full of, like, weird perfectionist right. losers who sit around doing crazy ass stuff. You know what I mean? But I don't, I don't blame him because I don't want to do anything either. I'm old, toothless, and tired. And I really am tired of, of trying to think of new, new fucking ideas. Excuse my language. <laughs> You're hearing this in a Bible school. <laughs> I, I think he, he's objecting to the uh, notion, traditional notions of God, which I think we have to do. And he, he does recognize the sacred nature of art or the sacred nature of people's experience. There is something in the nature of artistic creation, I think. Um, uh, I think Clive is putting his finger on it. Um, wherein you become, uh, well, it's an ancient notion, you become a vessel for the gods, they thought. Um, that, and I think something speaks through us. I mean, you know, contemporary uh, psychologists might say it's, you know, just, just neurological. It's, it's, you know, that's the god spot. Right. Yeah, I don't want to think about eternity. I don't think, it's like the eternal and omniscient. It's one of those words that has no meaning. My imagination just goes dead when I think of the word eternity. And, and I think we have to think of now. You know, we have to think, we have to live in time and deal with time. And, and so I don't want to, I don't think of, of uh, I don't think of my life as, I don't think of eternity. I don't know. Yeah, sometimes you think, what's it worth? How, how many, how, what's the appreciation for this? Is it worth all the work? Which, and it is a lot of work. But it's an iffy thing. You just, you mostly just do it because you can't not do it, you know. An idea comes to you or raw material comes to you that you can't resist using or messing with or changing or, it's like, a, it's like your approach to life. When you're dead, you're dead. Good evening. Tonight on Is There, we examine the question, is there a life after death? When you're dead, you're dead. <laughs> when you're dead, you're dead. that I'm going to heaven. When you're dead, you're dead. And with that, uh, I think we can start. When you're dead, you're dead. How do you know you're going to heaven? He does look a little different. The, the, the beard, a lot different. The beard is there to cover up my tumor. All very I thought, exciting. I thought you were someone else, and I was trying to, I was embarrassed to ask who. Oh, that's really fucked up. <laughs> I haven't seen it. How long has it been? I haven't seen you in years. It's been at least uh, two. We think it's probably, been nine years. Uh, yeah. We think it's been nine years, and nine years there was a party at the Hostlers that had the green slime. We yeah. think that was the last time. Proceeds benefit the work of Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Marin, including social and economic justice programs. This evening is wheelchair accessible. For tickets and information, visit www.uumarin.org or call 
hearing your reverb sound. That sounds like just that sounded like just your reverb, Don. That was just your reverb sound. So I think you got some maybe on your mixer you've got the main turned down and the reverb up. No. On the other cart you played? Yeah. No, that's right. And then, uh, so do you have my channels turned up? And just, you just leave them on. What are you? Patch bay. Whatever you put on the patch bay. Three. Yeah, whatever the patch bay is. Shit. God damn it. It's so just, I don't have any cards. We can cover. We need. Just put anything in. Damn it. Yeah, we need Fuck. Cover. Fucking shit. This place just bugs the shit out of me. Good filming, huh? Yeah, it's his. It was his connection. It's hard. Yeah, I'm sorry uh, if I harped on it too much in the car uh, last night. I, no, no, it upsets no. me a lot. I know it does. I know it does. Like I said, we we don't see it same way that you do because we don't see it with regularity. If, if, I, if I had known, I'd have done things a little differently. I'd have just compensated for the well, weaknesses that I didn't really the thing is, there's, there's know, no, know about. There's, there's no way of knowing, there's no way of knowing yeah. if that's going to happen because we've done some really complicated shows in the last year, that two years, that, that, that went fine and they have their usual crazy stumble, stumbles, which are all part of the game. But you know, it, he doesn't always have that happen. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't, if I just knew that even that it could have happened, you know, I'd have like like thought about well, maybe I need to make up a an outline or a list or or, or you know, I, I just don't know. Well, look, as panicked and fucked up as he was, let's just be glad that he didn't have a full-on seizure at the door. Sure. question. What is nothing? Brian, it's Peter. Uh, Don just died. And I didn't want to leave you a text message and I didn't want to leave you a voice message. I wanted to tell you with my voice, but I can't bear to make you wait by telling you just call me back or something I need to tell you because that's bullshit. But he died. I saw him this morning and he died 35 minutes ago, very suddenly. So I just wanted you to know, that's it. And, um, you know, on we go. Bye.
Russ, his roommate, called us and said, Peter, something's really wrong with Don. He, he, he couldn't. I heard him on the stairway wheezing and he couldn't get up the stairs and I went to you know see what was wrong and he wouldn't you know would dismiss me and it took him forever to get up the stairs and I I talked to him and he was barely breathing he was like you could hear him aspirating really sort of um, like and he could barely talk he's like uh I'm fine I'm fine I just ran out of breath I was like, no, you didn't just run out of breath and we made the executive decision three days later to take him in, and John took him in, and he never came out. But yeah, actually, one of the things Don and I talked about in the um, in the emergency room, he really wanted. We had talked about it before. Like he wanted the show to keep going. He had talked to Mark. I think he had talked to you about it. Like yeah. he was trying to find. He he wanted. He felt like he had sort of scoped out. An aesthetic and a tradition and and a workflow and a series of basic aesthetic rules that could outlive him. And uh, he didn't want it to stop. And um, uh, of course, at that time, I was like, you know, don't worry, he'll be out of here in two weeks. Don't worry. Like, you know, he was just worried that if anybody found out he was in the hospital, that KPFA would take the show from him. So at that point, he was like, that's right. We didn't like, talk about it on the air at all. Yeah, we did not talk about it on the air. And I was like, don't worry, I'm definitely doing the show until you get out of here. No problem at all. No one will ever know. Uh, but um, very quickly, he was also, I think, also thinking beyond that at that time when he was using words like continuity, and we had talked about it before. Do you do it the same way, or is it sort of... Um, that's a tough call. I'm already using iPads instead of carts. Um, there is, it is impossible to do it the same way. Um, no one else has done. I don't think anyone else could have ever taken it over the way you took it over though. Good morning, I'm David Green. Fans of the experimental rock band Negative Land might want to buy their new album soon because while supplies last, they get a bonus gift. It is a plastic bag with some of dead band member Don Joyce's cremated remains. There's a photo of the gift, ashes, about two grams, the bag says. In a statement, the band calls this a celebration of Joyce's belief that no idea in art was ever off limits. They said they're, quote, pretty sure he would have wanted it this way. You're listening to Morning Edition. Oh, boy. So the ashes, the bags. Well, I figured out a system, too, which was having, what was it, the bags upside down, and then, and then you just put the cart and just slide it in, you know what I mean? So here are the last of the Donald Joyce handmade tape carts, and what we're doing is we've taken them and we're putting them into these labeled plastic bags that another worker made, and the cart goes into the bag, and then a little baggie of Donald Joyce goes inside the cart bag like so, and you close it up, and it is thus ready for shipping. Um, to double bagged. Double bagged. Uh, we kind of like the idea of having the cart, uh, or rather the ashes, be sandwiched with a CD in the in the case. More, really more like this, so that the cart hides the ashes, the CD hides the ashes, the ashes are in the middle of the sandwich, so that when Customs opens it, should there be any Michigas, then it won't be an issue. <clears throat> we are, of course, just making this up as we go along. <clears throat> so these lucky humans will get a piece of Don, literally, and a piece of Don, culturally, artistically. Ride the accident. Yeah, some stuff you can... Ride just, the accident. Some stuff you can imagine, that you hear it and like, oh, of course that would be funny a million times. Ride the accident. Oh, you found it. Come on. Ride the accident. Come on, come on. Ride come on, the accident. come on. Ride the accident. Don had an uncanny knack for taking total non sequiturs from out of the middle of a long ramble 
and just realizing that that non sequitur phrase was the exact thing that needed to be played in a loop over and over and over, like, you know, one to 20 times per three hour episode until suddenly, are you worrying? Are you worrying? Feel your brain relaxing. Mm -hmm. Almost gone. So then we have Seven, and then there's about 10 or 12 in the back that we still want to transfer the audio from, which we'll work on tonight. Yeah. So then they'll be ready to give away once the audio has been copied. Yeah. And they may not yield anything. Um, okay, so that guy's going to get ejected, right? Hello. Do you want to do the control and I'll just do the tapes? Make it go faster that way? Yeah. Since you know you know Pro Tools better than me. Yeah. Alright. You better believe it. Rowan? Mm -hmm. You better believe it. <laughs> That's it. Good to have that one. That's good. Just let's three. listen to it. Yeah. All right, go. You think we're making all this up? No response. Oh, yeah. <laughs> .1 FM KPFA 89.3 FM KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 FM KFCF in Fresno, 97.5 K248BR in Santa Cruz, and online kpfa.org. It's midnight. Wobbly is here. It's time for Over the Edge. Individual, all of these individual packets have journeys of their own. That is so sweet.
Dijla in Arabic. The format is winning favor with Iraqis as a way to convey their wants and needs to their government. have faith that right faith makes right might. And then they heard the sound of the Lord God in the garden. with a true messenger of the gods. That's bizarre. Yeah. Okay, on to another thing that I love. This is I happier. Love. This is so much happier.